Howdy, y'all. Uh, well, I've been dealing with being sick, and I think I have an impingement in my neck. So today I figured, since I can't play, I can't do anything active, might as well do a little bit of a in the bag for you guys. So let's jump into it, I guess. Uh, first, we'll look in the little pockets. I carry a few different minis with me, just depending on what I feel like using. Um, I'm very superstitious, so if I'm putting bad with using one mini, I'll switch to another, and vice versa. Uh, I have this little PDGA scorecard that I painted myself. Pop this open, got some sunglasses, some ibuprofen, my PDGA card, car keys, towel, and a Sharpie, you know. If you get new plastic, you gotta put your name on it right away. Uh, in this other pocket, I have just mosquito spray and my disc retriever for when I flub shots, because I do it a lot. All right, now let's get to the meat of the bag. So let's start with the top pocket. I carry three P2s. Uh, one's a C-line, two of them are D-line putters. This one I've had since I first got P2s and it's nice and rough around the edges so it grabs the chains really nice. It's becoming a little bit of a waffle but I love it and it usually gives me confidence. I also have this that I got from Spring Valley. It's the Junior Texas State Championships. Um, they just had them on sale and I figured I'd get one to support the shop. It's a little bit heavier and it's a little bit more stable. Uh, by the way, both of these are max weight at 175 grams, just because it does get windy down here in Texas sometimes. I also carry this C-Line P2. Uh, this is just a very beefy putter that likes to float in the air. Anything I need to kind of glide and get down to the left, this is what I'm using. It's not crazy dumpy, but it is very stable and it does like to get left big panning Anheuser's or whatnot. This is usually what I'm reaching for, anything inside of 250 feet. I also carry in the top pocket, and this disc is unique because every other disc in my bag, I carry at least two of that mold. This is the only disc that I only have one of in this mold, and it is a D-Line P1X. I use this exclusively for step putts outside the circle because it's a little bit straighter from long distance as opposed to the P2s and uh, it just kind of floats in the air a little bit longer. So this is a step putt only disc and I like it. All right, next up, I carry four of this mold and people that know me will know why. I carry four senseis two active baseline, two active premium. So let's just uh, go through what I have here. First off, I have this pink baseline uh, that I've been throwing for a minute since they first came out in the Sensei variation. I don't have any of the, uh, what was it? Something Fox, something Wolf, I don't know. But these discs are incredible. They're a three-speed putter, but they fly a lot more like a mid-range. They are very thin, as you can see. Not a lot of dome. Uh, the baselines are almost even a little puddle top, but they are so straight. This one's beat in now to the point where it's a hyzer flip machine. So I'll just put it on a little hyzer, maybe 50%, have it flip up, go dead straight, or crank on it a little bit more and have it flip up and go right when I need it for those late right turns. And uh, this is probably my favorite disc in my bag and it was the cheapest. If you haven't thrown a Sensei, get them. They are cheap, even in the premium plastic, they are cheap. Another baseline plastic Sensei that I'm just kind of working through the bag. This one's a little bit more stable than the pink one. It's, a, it's more of a hyzer flip to straight on more power that I like to use, or soft hyzers that I want to get about 200 feet and just kind of squish next to the basket. This is usually what I'm throwing or anything straight down a hallway that I don't want a chance to flip in turn because no matter how hard I crank on this one for some reason, I guess it hasn't broken in enough, it will not turn to the right. I have a pink premium Active Sensei. This 
run, I guess, came out a little bit flatter in the pink. Um, it's pretty stiff, but also has quite a bit of give to it. Like all other senseis, it's nice and flat. It's very narrow profile, so it's, it, it moves. It gets through the air. Uh, this is my dead straight. I put this on any angle and it holds it to the ground. This is not flex out. It does not break out of a hyzer, a flat, or an anheuser. This is the best utility disc in my bag. Next to that baseline pink one, this is my favorite disc. Can't say enough good things about the Sensei. And last, I have this blue premium active line Sensei. Uh, it's quite a bit domier than the pink one and quite a bit more stable. It's a little bit stiffer as well. This flies very similar to that C-Line P2. It just wants to push a little farther and the dump out of the air is a lot less dramatic. So anything inside of 250 feet that I need a soft hyzer for, this is usually the disc I'm reaching. You can get a nice skip out of it or you can throw some good sized panning anhyzers with this disc. Love the Sensei. All right, next up in the bag, I carry two Discmania Tactics. Um, the first one is a XO Hard Evolution Tactic. Uh, plain and simple. This is really just forehand flick ups, just overstable, dumpy, land by the basket and stick. Uh, sometimes I'll use it for little touch flexes to get out of trouble. Just a utility disc. I very rarely am throwing this off the tee or for long distances. Uh, and then I have a razor claw in the um, vapor plastic. I don't throw this a lot. I'll throw it if I need something skippy on a forehand or backhand and I need it to not sit in the air for too long. But this disc is mostly in my bag for sentimental reasons. It's the first one I got and it has the broken claw, razor claw stamp. And so it's just like a fun little topic of conversation. It gives me good vibes because I am very superstitious. I need the good vibes in the bag. All right, so next we have two MD3s. The first MD3 I'm gonna talk about is this P-Line MD3. If you have one of these in blue, pink, or purple, hit me up, let me know in the comments because I wanna buy it from you. I cannot find these anywhere. And the P-Line MD3s are possibly my favorite mid-range. They can beat in so nice and they have such a late flip. I'll usually throw this on quite a bit of hyzer. It'll flip up to flat and then finally start dumping at about 200, 250 feet and start getting to the right. Love this disc. You can power down on it, get it nice and straight. You can do big Anheusers on it. P-Line MD3, slept on, man. Good disc, love that disc. I also carry a C-Line MD3. Uh, it's not as flat as some MD MD3s. It's a little bit more floaty in the air. Uh, kind of holds the same line that I want to throw it on. It's a little bit more touchy for me when trying to throw flat as most people know, throwing flat is the hardest skill in disc golf. But when you do throw it flat, it just goes dead straight, doesn't really fade out, and just kind of cruises to the ground and lands pretty soft. Up next are my MD5s. These are very utility. Um, this first one is a blue sea line that I dyed myself. This one is 174. Um, it has a little bit of the bubbles in the edge, so the edge is a little bit grippy, I guess. Um, it catches a lot of dirt, so it looks really faded around the edges. But this is my workhorse. It's not as crazy overstable as a lot of other MD5s. And I use this for pretty much what I use that tactic for, that pink tactic, but I use it for longer distances or if I need a dumpier flight, or if I need to make sure that it does not go to the left on a forehand. Uh, sometimes I'll throw this backhand level if I need to just go get straight and then get left quick inside of like 250 to 300 feet. But other than that, I don't use the MD5s super often. I also have a swirly pink star MD5. This one's quite a bit more overstable than that C-Line. Pretty much use it for the same thing. Uh, it's just quite a bit dumpier and I like to keep a backup in there. Also this S-Line run, this swirly one came out really grippy and nice and stiff. So I keep it in the bag for good measure. All right, oh, after that, Let's go up here to this zipper pocket. I carry two essences. Essences? Essences. They are the neoplastic 
from Disc Mania, but molded by Latitude. Uh, the first one is a 174 gram essence. It's a little bit denser. You can feel it when you hold it. And uh, these are fun. These are just fun discs. This one's got a little bit more of a straight line, like a little bit of hyzer to straight line finish. Uh, whereas this one is 160, 169 grams. It's quite a bit more understable than this one. It might also be that I use it a lot more. Uh, but these are almost get out of jail free cards. If I need to make sure that I'm hitting a gap off the tee, so I don't have to throw very fast, I'll throw one of these, know that it'll flip up and penetrate down the fairway a lot faster than a putter will. But I don't really throw these for big distance, but I recommend them. They're fun to have and they are a cool like trick shot disc to use. All right, and last on the fairway drivers, which you will find in not just most Discmania throwers bags, but a just player's bag in general. I carry two C-Line FD3s. This first one is a like royal purple and it had a beautiful gold stamp and it was kind of color change, but I use it a lot. It's a little bit domey. Um, and for some reason with this disc, it makes it a little bit straighter. So this one's not as crazy dumpy as a lot of FD3s. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a Domi PD in that it'll go between 350 to 400 feet on a rope. Love this disc. It just kind of sits in the air and towards the end of the flight will drop out. Very predictable. Love the FD3. I also carry this Pink Glow Sea Line FD3. This plastic feels incredible. If you haven't thrown glow plastic before, you should because it's pretty great. Uh, this is primarily my forehand disc, quite a bit more overstable than that purple FD3. And anything that I need to throw forehand and get back to the right, this is what I'm throwing. Love it. This probably won't be leaving my bag anytime soon. Okay, now onto the big daddies of the bag. Uh, I carry quite a few drivers, so, I, I mean, as most people do. First off, we will look at the DDX. Oh, Chris, you throw a DDX, you noodle arm little girl, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I throw some DDXs, okay? This S-Line DDX is the most beat up DDX that I have ever thrown. It didn't start out any type of stable anyway, so this is a roller disc. Something about it is so understable that in the air it wants to get to the ground, but once it's on the ground, it is a more stable mold and a faster mold. So once it gets to the ground, it doesn't want to flip and go right. It wants to hold the angle pretty straight. So really cool utility disc. I'll also use this, use this for really touch forehands where I can put it on a lot of hyzer and have it flip up and go dead straight. Uh, this disc is fun, man. I just. It will always go right if you throw it back in. It will always go right. And then I have this C-Line, very stiff C-Line run of the DDX. A little bit flatter than that one. And this is a bomber. This actually has my longest distance throw with it. Uh, it, it just crushes, man. You throw this on a hyzer, it wants to flip up, get flat, come right, and then just trickle out to the left at the end. I really don't use this for a lot of controlled shots. This is more of, I want to put it way out left and have it drift back to the right. That's what I'm using this DDX for. All right, so the disc and my favorite discs in the bag. I carry three of them, three S-Line DD3s. The first one is a 167 gram board flat DD3 that I dyed myself. Uh, hey, support you know, gay rights, support it. It's an important issue, and I don't want to be like preaching down your throat, but uh, that was the ideology behind this disc that I did die myself. Um, but because it's board flat, it's pretty stiff, and it's a little bit lighter weight. I've had two surgeries on my right shoulder, so my forehand is not the best, uh, but this one feels great in the hand. I can let it go out flat. It's a little bit lighter, so sometimes I'll get some turn uh, and it'll always come back right. And I can throw this one between 300 to 350 feet. It's just a good disc. And I don't think I've ever even thrown this backhand because it's not crazy floaty, but 
it just feels great. I mean, look how flat this disc is for a DD3. No pop at all on the top. Next up is a pretty domey S-Line DD3, a blue one uh, at max weight. It's pretty stiff, and this one will glide in the air forever. This is probably my least stable DD3 that I own. Uh, I'll throw it on a little bit of hyzer, pop up the flat, get a little right turn and come back. Uh, but mostly I like to power down on this, throw it on a little bit of hyzer, get it to stand up flat for that controllable distance. This is one of the coolest DD3s I've thrown. And I know that because I think I have something like 13 DD3s in the garage at the moment. And this is my favorite Bomber DD3. Just love it. And it's got some cool swirls in it that you can't really see on camera, but in person looks super sick. And the last DD3 I have is a Cloudbreaker 2 in max weight in this blue color. Pretty domey, pretty pop toppy. Uh, a little bit more gummy than that last DD3. And these things are awesome. I like them more than the first run Cloud Breakers. The first one Cloud Breakers were pretty beefy. I'd compare them close to like PD2. Uh, but these are a lot less beef. So you could throw these on a little bit of hyzer, have them flip up and just ride dead straight. Uh, if you throw them flat, they want to get a little bit of turn and come out. They're still pretty stable, uh, but they are not beefcakes love it they sit in the air for a long time they're very domey and the swirls that came out with this run are just freaking tasty Cloudbreaker 2 dd3 in max weight it's a bomb all right so now we come up to the last group of discs uh these are the big boys and it's three pd2s that i keep in my bag First PD2 up is a very pop toppy Skyrider PD2 uh, in max weight. And these things crush. These, this Skyrider specifically is probably less stable than that Cloudbreaker 2 I have. Don't know what it is about this run, but you can throw these flat and these will turn and come back. They fly a lot more like a DD3 than a PD2 and they sit in the air forever because they are so domey. Plus, these discs came out in pretty cool plastic with that swirly plastic. And uh, it's just cool to kind of have the Simon Lazat disc in my bag. And then I have a C-Line Chaos PD2. Uh, it's not crazy domey, it's pretty flat. This one is 175 grams. This is the controllable bomb for me. Uh, I'll throw it out flat or on a tiniest bit of hyzer and just have it go straight, straight, straight and dump back left. This is a workhorse. I'll usually throw, I don't care about this one as much and I'll usually throw it on holes with water or holes where I have to carry over some giant grass or brush because I'm not super worried about it. I have a backup for it, but uh, it's a cool disc. I mean, it gets the job done. It's very stiff and this chaos run, I feel like came out really nice. And then lastly, I have an S-Line PD2. This thing is a beefcake. There is no flipping this over ever, no matter how much headwind you throw it into, this thing wants to get left. Uh, it's not crazy domey like the Skyrider, but it's also not as flat as the Chaos. It has a personalized die job by me with a little glow butter on the front and glow butter on the back. And this is really just, if there's any wind at all, I want to know what the disc is gonna do. And so this is what I will usually throw, is this S-Line PD2. It's a beast. And honestly, the DD3 and the PD2 are staples for pretty much anyone's bag. Especially if you have an arm. These discs are awesome. So, yeah, I guess that's it. That's all the discs in my bag. Thank you guys for stopping by and, you know, hanging out with me while I talk about my bag. Hit the subscribe button, please. That'd be super sick. And uh, don't forget to throw up.